Have you ever had a radiator fail? Well, we did. Let's take a look. This is a radiator out of a 200,000 mile 2007 GM SUV. Uh, specifically a 6.2 liter, but pretty much all the full-size SUVs have the same style radiator in them, and they only differ maybe by a couple of different model numbers, but for the most part, it's like you see here. Now, why do they fail? Well, that's kind of the question we asked. Yes, they're plastic tanks, aluminum core, pretty much all the same across the board in your vehicles nowadays. But again, why does something that's well taken care of, and we should see when we get this thing apart that it has been taken care of, and why would they fail? But let's actually get to the bottom of it. We're gonna open this thing up, take a look. We have not done so yet. We've started to pry a couple of these tabs open, but let's take a closer look as we do it. Okay, so here's our radiator laying down. And as I mentioned, we've got an aluminum core and then we have a plastic tank here. Uh, I think you can see that we've got some residual right here and that's right where our radiator failed. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to basically open up each one of these tabs here. We thought we'd cut them off, but nah, I think we're gonna pry them up and just kind of open it up like a, kind of like you'd open up a can, if you will, and then actually take this tank off and see if we can, uh, or just see what we can find in general. So here we go. As we mentioned, we're just going to uh, pry up these tabs here. A little more persuasion with a uh, larger screwdriver here. And it looks like we're kind of already there. And okay, I think we've got most of it broken free, at least so we can, except for the bottom we haven't done, but hopefully we can just pry it out of there. And there we have it. So as I mentioned, it was well taken care of. No evidence of sludge. There is some what looks like a little sand down in there, uh, but very clean looking tank, uh, very clean looking core as well. You know, typically you'll see a lot of corrosion if uh, you know the right uh, coolant has not been used. Typically you'll see some reaction between uh, different types of metals and such and see some um, some growth there, but that's not, the, the core looks really, really good. So literally we had a failure in the tank, which we can see right here. So right here we can see around all this white stuff is our crack is right there in that fin and right there in that fin. And let's see if we can see that from the inside. Yeah, it looks like we've got a crack here. It looks like some delaminating of the actual plastic tank is happening. See that cracking right there? And that's right where we were leaking is on the opposite side of this. So we could have done that a little bit as we were uh, taking this out and flexing it. But again, probably caused by the crack that was already there and then us flexing it is having that come out of pieces. But that's odd that, uh, that again, the, the, the core looks so good, but the plastic would fail. Let's take a look at something else. We see the core here is nice and clean, and if the tank were off the other side, we could see through it, so let's take that tank off. One thing we found interesting here, so we just laid this on top of our, uh, our worktop. I'm gonna bang it a little bit here. And look at the, all that debris coming out. Now this again, as far as visually inspecting, looked pretty clean, but all the sand and debris that is packed inside those fins, that stuff can add up and actually cause you to overheat as well, where your radiator may look clean, but actually in between each one of those fins are just different dust, sand, uh, bug debris, you name it, you can get in there. Now on this side is not only our tank, but also we have our transmission cooler. So our transmission fluid comes in, circulates through here as well. Now what does this look like on the inside of this core? How does this transmission fluid actually cool in here? So let's take a look and let's go ahead and get this one out. 
By the way, isn't this what uh, flathead screwdrivers are made for? Good pry bars, right? Okay, I think we've got that one broke loose as well. And there's our seal. And let's get some of the get rid of some of this water. Cool it. And again, good looking core here. And here's our transmission cooler. So transmission cooler right inside that tank so the transmission fluid is going to come in it's going to go through these different passages just kind of like what we see here in a core so this is the transmission fluid core and it passes along here and this cooler water is cooling down that transmission fluid as well so there's your transmission cooler built into the side tank of your radiator again as we mentioned no failure on the seal, no failure on the actual core itself. That looks very good. Just a failure on the plastic tank on the one side. So I think we're going to glue this back together and uh, put it back in a vehicle or maybe just sell the radiator. No, just kidding. Well, it really doesn't seem like we found anything that interesting, uh, anything more than we knew we were going to find anyway, and that is a broken tank, a broken plastic tank. We'd already identified that when we actually had it in the vehicle. Uh, so we've already fixed it by replacing it. That's kind of one of the catches in today's society is we don't really fix things. You know, 20, 30 years ago, we would actually core out the radiator, replace a tank, solder a tank, things like that. When we had uh, brass radiators or brass tanks and aluminum cores or even, even brass cores, things got fixed like that. We don't fix them anymore. We just replace them. So you know, 200 bucks and we had a new a brand new radiator put it in there and if i wanted to buy a gm maybe 360 400 uh, but anyway we're parts replacers a lot of times nowadays uh, so just really wanted to look inside and see what actually caused this now here's my thoughts on it you can see this thing is very clean so it's not like it was taken advantage of and just water ran in it and had tons of corrosion uh, so it wasn't misused and had a failure in that sense of things uh, we did see that we had a lot of trash built into the radiator, but again, that would cause a lot of overheating and we would see it from that way. So it wasn't due to lack of airflow through the actual core. That was interesting though. And I would say that, hey, maybe we should clean that out from time to time. And I know that's a good recommendation, but let's face it, it's kind of hard to get to your radiator. You got electric fans on one side, you got the condenser coil on the other. So you can try to blow through there with some water or compressed air, but again, you're probably not gonna get a good clean unless you remove the, the fans or pull it out from the condenser coil. Um, but what I think it is, I think it had to do with steam. I think we probably ran this low on coolant a couple of times, which I know that did happen. Uh, and that's going to cause a lot more pressure buildup than just hot water or hot coolant. Um, when you're building steam, that's expanding multiple times its size, uh, creating a lot of pressure. And I think that's where it found a weak spot and actually failed and cracked the tank. And then once you start releasing the fluid, well, it's kind of let, like letting the smoke out of an electric motor. Um, so there you have it. Wanted to do a simple how-to. It was interesting to see our transmission cooler there, which by the way, that maybe we could use that for a transmission cooler on something else. Hey, there you have it. This was a GM radiator and it's probably a lot the same as most of your other radiators out there. Hey, will you keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter? Let us know in the comments what you thought about this and let us know your thoughts on why you think it failed. Also, if you don't mind, would you hit that like button and even hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber, but only if you liked our videos. If you hated our video, you thought it was a waste of your time, then by all means, give us that thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.